You're welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to be solving this equation. We have 8 raised to the power sine squared of s and plus 8 raised to the power cos squared of s equals 6. Well, I will begin by um, writing 8 um, in its index, in, uh, index form. So we have um, 2, this becomes 2 raised to the power 3. And we have sine squared of x. And this to become 2 raised to the power 3 and multiplied by cos squared of x. Of course, when we take the product of the two new power, this is what we will be having there. And this equals x. Okay? Um, next is, uh, this is an odd one out. I want both to be similar. It's either I change both to cosine of x or I change both to um, um, sine of x. So you recall this fundamental trigonometric identity that stays at the sine squared of x and plus cos squared of x is equal to 1. And from here, you see that the sine squared, okay, let, let's take the cos squared of x. The cos squared of x, so that we make this become like this one, is equal to 1 and minus sine squared of x. So I am putting this here. I'm putting all of this in place of this here. And what do we have here? So we have 2 today, um, 3 sine squared of x. And plus, this becomes 2 raised to the power. Let me put down this 3 separately. Then I'll open a parenthesis and put all of this in place of cos squared of s. So we have 1 minus sine squared of x. And all of it equals 6. So from here, this becomes 2 raised to the power 3 sine squared of x. And plus, this becomes 2 raised to the power 3 and minus 3 sine squared of x and all of this equals 6. Um, at this point what can we do here? You probably know the law of indices um, that states that if you're having something like m, if it's having um, power like a minus b, it is the same thing as m raised to the power a and divided by m to the power of b. So let us let us do something like this. Let's do something like that here, such that this will become 2 raised to the power 3 sine squared of x and plus. So we're here, we're going to be having 2 raised to the power 3 and divided by um, 2 raised to the power 3 sine squared of x. And all of it equals 6. Okay? Now, at this point, we notice that we are having 2 raised to the power 3 sine squared of x all over the place. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put, let us put um, this um, 2 raised to the power 3 sine squared of s. Let us put this as equal something like k. Okay, let us use k. And then all of this become k and plus 2 raised to the power 3 and divided by k and all equals 6. Okay, at this point, it is um, only natural to <laughs> multiply both sides by k. And the reason why we are going to be doing that is so that we can get rid of what we have added in the middle here, so that the whole thing can be linear. And so we have k multiplied by k here, we have k squared, and plus, this becomes, eight. this is 8, right? So we have 8 and equals c squared. This is a quadratic equation. Please let us solve this using completing the square method. And to do that, I'm bringing this here by subtracting this from both sides, and I'm bringing this here by subtracting it from both sides. So I'm left with k squared and plus um, n minus 6k and equals negative 8. Well, the next thing we do is we need to add something here to make this expression here a perfect square. Um, the tip I usually give here is if you can add squared, add, we're going to, the coefficient here is 6. We are going to half it. We are going to get half of it. Then we square the whole thing. This is what must be added in every case. So when you are having, um, when you are having, when you have um, a quadratic expression a s squared plus b x and plus c equals zero the expression to add to this part to make it a perfect square what c can be is 
half the coefficient here and squared okay every time this work okay so and that is what we're going to do here such that half of six is three and we square it that makes it nine so we have k squared minus six k and plus three squared is equal to negative eight and plus three squared and um, what we we'll multiply by each other to give three squared and add up to give negative six and that's that's going to be minus three and minus three so this becomes k squared minus three k and minus three k and plus three squared equals this is nine and we take eight from it you have one so and um, let's factor this to this two part so we have k come on here let's open a bracket we'll multiply by k to give k squared is k and multiplied by multiply minus 3 by k gives this we'll close this bracket what is common to this both of these is negative 3 open a bracket and we'll multiply by minus 3 to give that is k and here plus 3 close that back bracket and it's equal to 1 so outside of the bracket when we factor k oh excuse me this is supposed to be negative so this is common here so we have k minus 3 and we have k minus 3 in there when we open this bracket we get this equals 1 so this is k minus 3 squared which is what we are trying to do in the first place and um, from here we take the square root of both sides and k minus 3 is equal to the um, plus or minus square root of 1 so and the square root of 1 is 1 such that k is equal to 3 plus or minus 1 which is either 4 or 2 okay at this point we are almost done remember we put this as k so let us solve this so let's solve this completely to obtain x so we have um, 2 raised to power 3 sine squared of s is equal to let's take the very first solution which is 4 and such that this is also equal to 2 raised to power 2. We cancel this out and we have 3 sine squared of s is equal to 2. We divide both sides by 3 and sine squared of s is equal to 2 divided by 3. But recall, when you have sine squared of s, it simply means sine x multiplied by sine of x. And so I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So this is reduced to sine of x and is equal to the square root of 2 divided by 3. So I could put plus or minus there, but let's ask, let's assume we are taking a positive value. So we have x is equal to the inverse sine of the square root of 2 divided by 3. This is one solution. You can press the calculator for that. To get the second one, we have 2 raised to power 3 sine squared of x equals the second solution which is 2 and 2 is the same as 2 raised to power 1 we get rid of that part as well and we have 3 sine squared of x we have um, and we have 3 sine squared of x equals 1 we divide both sides by 3 again sine squared of x equals 1 divided by 3 and sine x equals the square root of 1 divided by 3 and x equals the inverse sine x sine square root of 1 divided by 3 and these are the solutions these two are the solutions for the um, equation we have right here it's an interesting one thank you guys for stopping by and see you in the next one